Welcome back to Android's Q&A. My name is Jace, and this is where we try and answer your most pressing Android questions. Now, the first question isn't very pressing, but surprisingly enough, I got it more than half a dozen times. Why do you have the first Galaxy Note? If you're so geeky and up with tech, wouldn't you have upgraded by now? Are you challenging my geek cred? Are you questioning my level of geekery? Oh, here we go again. Let me tell you something. Anyone can take a Galaxy Note 3 and look slick and sexy, but the fact that I can take this old, clunky, slow, heifer of a phone and make it do my bidding is a testament to my level of geekery. Who are you calling heifer? And if she decides to misbehave and be slow, crash, or misplace my widgets again? You really don't want to do that. I keep her in line with a hard reboot. Yeah. What do you think now, Google Now? Chase, we're still listening. Oh, you're good. You're good. So to start off, let's talk about just how secure is Android. Dante asks, hey Jace, one question for you. Just how secure is Android? At a major conference, the former CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, claimed that Android was more secure than the iPhone. The audience's response? They laughed. A lot. <laughs> Now, although that wasn't the response that Eric Schmidt was looking for, it does testify to the fact that there's a general consensus, false though it may be, that Android is somehow less secure than other mobile operating systems. So where does it all come from and is it true? In general, the Linux kernel for Android and the Darwin kernel for iOS are equally vulnerable to bugs, which when exploited, allow hackers to gain unauthorized access to parts of the system that should be off limits. While Linux and Darwin are very mature systems, and all of the obvious bugs should have been found, both systems are always changing and growing. They are dynamic, and as such, they will always be security vulnerabilities. So the bottom line is that Android is not any more or less secure than the iPhone. There are multiple layers of security built into the OS, and if you're not engaging in high-risk behaviors and restricting your apps to the Google Play Store, you should be able to enjoy your Android phone with no problem. Chai asks, I have two Google accounts for some reason. Can I merge the two accounts into one? Yes, Chai, you can. And I watched a number of videos on the subject that were far too complicated, but I found one right here. You can see that link, or you can click on the link that I have in the show links that's very straightforward and will set you straight. Good luck. Anton Escano asks, Jace, why are our phones a lot more expensive than tablets? Most phones are about $600 to $800. Why are tablets only two to $300? That's a great question, Anton. I've had that question myself, and I found an answer to that that Asus gave to CNET. Here it is. With small devices, Asus Regional Director Jonathan Santob said, often there's more engineering, development, and testing required to shrink down the components without affecting the heating, for example, and still offering the best performance. I also think the development and tooling costs are slightly higher. And you know what, Asus Regional Director? I don't fully buy it. I don't doubt that it is a contributing factor, but when you take manufacturing and the, and the economies of scale, I think that has much less of an effect than the other two aspects that to me are pretty obvious. One is supply and demand. There is much more demand for smartphones nowadays than there are tablets. And the second is just simply perception. If a tablet is regularly eight, nine hundred dollars, uh, people are going to be wondering why, why would I spend eight hundred dollars for only a little bit of increased mobility when I could get a notebook or a small tablet that's much more powerful for the same price or cheaper. So it really comes down to supply and demand and perception. Good question though. Thanks for watching Android Peeps. My name is Jace, and if you found this helpful, kindly give us a like and subscribe. If you'd like to connect with me, I'm right here on Google Plus and Twitter. I do read all your comments. Sometimes there was like over a thousand on one video, but I read all of them. I can't respond to them all, unfortunately, but if you like a comment or question, and enough people do, I'm much more likely to use that in the next Q&A. You don't want to forget my wonderful co-host here at Android Authority. We try to be your source for all things Android.